At the recording of this podcast, it is summer, and the kids are out of school, and most of the parents I know are pulling their hair out. <laughs> and I have a solution for you. If you're about to like go on strike as a parent, and you don't want to do it anymore, I have some pretty powerful information that may rock your world and reset your summer. So stick with me here, because I think you're going to really, really find it powerful. This is Zen in a Moment. It's the podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stress forever and be the cool, awesome, fabulous person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow, which means feeling light, open, and wise. And I'm your host, Zen Cryer DeBrook, stress as guidance expert. Oh my gosh, children, they can drive you to drink and do all kinds of other crazy things. But I'm here with some powerful information about how your internal guidance system responds to your parenting, how you end up maybe going into this place. You know, I know for me, I am a very strict parent. Okay. I'm loving and I'm cuddly and I'm also fun, but I have a three-year-old son and I am like powerfully adamant that he must listen. I also am one of these people that really keeps my house ship shape and, and I like things in its place. And I had my son at 43, so I was kind of set in my ways. And my husband and I, we have an adult home. And we, 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 we really don't have an adult home now, but, but there's boundaries. There's a lot of boundaries. And what I'm finding is, is that I'm learning to use my internal guidance system to parent better and to stay in that state of flow, like, like I say, feeling light, open, and wise. And all of my friends and girlfriends and who are using their internal guidance system to parent are reporting the same thing, that this innate system that we were born with not only has us enjoying parenting way more, way more than we ever did before, but also that we're better parents. So if you don't know what your internal guidance system is, if you got past this you know, along from someone, please go to zeninamoment.com, watch the video there. You were born with an internal guidance system that is a powerful asset to having you have a happy, satisfied, amazing life and for you to actually be an extraordinary, calm, amazing, happy person. So check it out. The video there will walk you through actually feeling, you will actually feel it in your body. All right. So... Your internal guidance system operates with opening and closings and neutrals. Closing is stress. Now, what I mean by stress is worry, fear, anxiety, overwhelm, frustration, irritation. Uh, it could show up. These, these things have you show up as being as like burnt out, right? Um, exhaustion often comes from following your closings and being closed. And what I found is that we parent the way our parents parented us in a lot of ways. And even if we try to do it differently, when we are in a dysfunctional place in our lives, let's say we're overtired or uh, we're, we're struggling with unknowing how to manage our children, um, there's too much on our plate, we can revert back to the way our parents parented. I know that I'm recognizing my mom was an angry mom and I can get really, really frustrated and upset and tense with my son. So I'm gonna give you a couple examples of how those sensations of being frustrated, irritated, overwhelmed, um, and how we put those on our kids, they're really the way we're thinking about what our child is doing. Now, this is a pretty controversial, it could be considered a very controversial topic because it's really a different way of looking at your relationship with yourself and your children. There's been a lot of things out there around mindfulness and being, you know, bringing in a sense of presence and mindfulness to our parenting, right? And how to do that. This internal guidance system is able to give you that moment to moment as you're in the thick of the shit with your kid, okay? So if, if you if you if you have a problem with cussing, please forgive me. I'm not for everybody, but I, I it's the truth. You're like in your shit with your kid. And so an example is yesterday my son came home from daycare and uh, was racing all around the house being a crazy child. And one of the things that he's not allowed to do is put his big trucks on our tables where he eats. But I had laid out this tablecloth and had Play-Doh and utensils and all this stuff. And he ran over excited to get his truck and I and was bringing it back to the table. And I immediately was like, no, do not put your truck on the table. But I noticed I was close. I had a tight sensation, which means the way that I was thinking about it was not true or, or something was that I was worried about wasn't going to happen. And I don't, I'm not always able to do this perfectly, but I was stopped and I was like, wait a minute, show me what opened me was, show me what you want to do. And so 
he put his truck on the table, which there was this plastic tablecloth, and then he opened up his truck and he started making, it's like a carrier truck, and he started making these little tiny fake cars out of his Play-Doh and putting them on his carrier truck. And it was perfectly okay. He wasn't racing the truck around the table. And I looked at him and I said, that's okay. Other times he will go to do something and like that I think is dangerous. And I'll look over and I'll think, oh no, that he's going to get himself in trouble. And I will be closed. And I'm like, oh, he can manage that. And I'll open. So there's that there's a fear factor, and I watch him, and he's perfectly able to climb that rock or walk along that fence or do whatever he's, you know, that beam and on, on a little low fence or whatever. Um, other times we'll be in the middle of a, he'll be having a mount, meltdown in the middle of a Target store or something. And my thoughts will immediately go into this place of embarrassment and shame, and I'll notice I'm closed. And so I'll be like, oh, I'm closed. That means what I'm thinking about everybody looking at me as a horrible parent is not true. And I'll open, and I'll be like, okay. Other times I'll be like, this, what his behavior is really bothering the people around him. I need to leave and I'll open. So you can use this internal guidance system to keep you in, what hap- in a centered place. What happens is, is when you open up, when you, when you go away from your closings that's upsetting you and you open up, all of a sudden you get back to that super cool adult parent, right? You, you come back into being clear headed. You're able to hold your own in the middle of a meltdown. Now, I want to give you another situation that is so incredibly powerful. I, I had a student tell me this, and to this day, I think it's one of the most powerful attributes of the internal guidance system I've ever heard in parenting, and I've heard a lot of really good stories. Um, this woman's daughter came downstairs. She's 14 years old, and she came downstairs in this unbelievably sexy outfit, and her mother saw her and immediately was a like take that off. She didn't say it. That's immediately, and she was about to. And she's been working with her internal guidance system. And she, she realized that thought closed her of her daughter taking the dress off. And she was like, oh my gosh. Now this is one of the times where your IGS goes against your common sense is what you're thinking. And you're like, how can this be? And you, once you've worked with your IGS for long enough, you're going to realize that it's right. You want to follow this instinct because what comes out of it is usually massively beautiful and amazing and more profound than what your mind would have imagined. So she was like, oh my God, so she needs to go out of the house looking like this? And she opened. And it terrified her, of course. She had this scenario going in her head. And she said to her daughter, she said, honey, where did you get that dress? And her daughter said, so-and-so, you know, gave it to me, blah, blah, blah. And she's all, where are you going tonight? And she was going to the movies. And she was like, okay, we'll have a good time. And she left and she, you know, white knuckled it the whole time until her daughter came home. And when her daughter came home, she still didn't say anything. She still got an opening to not say a word. And about two weeks later, she remembered. She was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that situation. And she said to her daughter at breakfast, she said, honey, where's that dress that so-and-so gave you? Mom, I gave it back to her because I didn't like the way people looked at me when I was wearing it. I felt really uncomfortable. I couldn't sit comfortably. And I just, it's not me. It's just not the way I want to be. Now, if you have kids, you know how powerful that a realization is. That that young woman has discovered something about herself that's super important. And and if you have teenagers, you know that the second that you tell them to not do something that that has them feel like you are usurping their power, their freedom, their their you know not trusting their judgment, they want to rebel. And so, what happened was is she was able to make the decision for herself. And if she hadn't, that dress would have been hidden in that backpack and put on so many times in so many situations. Most likely, I'm guessing. That dress would have become the moment of pain between her and her mom. So what I want to mention is is that in the midst of the summer hell, right, there's a lot of exhaustion happening. There's a lot of overwhelm. There's also a lot of opportunity to hone your coming into a place of deep love and respect for your children, of not clamping down so tight that they are squished and feeling like they don't have any sense of self or not being so loose. Like there's other times where you don't want to say something to your kid, but your IGS opens that you have to, you have to have that hard conversation. So, and you open, you know it, you can't deny it. And in paying attention to when you're feeling that frustration, worry, fear, anxiety, overwhelm, pain, before you speak, stop. And I know it's it's, going to take practice and believe me, it takes practice for me. Right? Okay, I have lots of times where my honey's, my husband's like, honey, you're, in a, you're a little bit 
overboard here. And I'll be like, right? So, and he's right. And I'll reconfigure my thinking and pay attention to what is it that my family needs? What does my son need from me most right now? I'll figure it out. I'll open back up. And then I'm able to just drop right back into being with him. So I want to offer this to you as a, as a way to pay attention to your internal state as you're working with your kids, because they're going to feel it. And you're going to build an extraordinary relationship with them that will last a lifetime. I actually am hoping and believe, and I've watched this happen with other people that I adore who have had teenagers, that if we learn to maneuver between structure and parenting and love and respect of them as a being, that, that the teenagers are not a place where we get disconnected, where there's not the necessarily the fight. And I think the IGS is a place where we can take this difficultness of, of having this part of our heart walking around outside of us, and we can learn how to manage it for ourselves and for them, where it creates more unity and connection and love and respect than we possibly could have ever done with what our parents gave us because it's a real present time in the moment tool that it will will be completely unique to each child you have i hope you enjoyed this i know it's a lot of information i want your comments below um, I know that not every situation is easy and there's lots of difficult parenting situations out there that are that would need more unraveling than just a moment like this. But what I'm here to tell you is I'm here to answer those questions as best I can and support you with coaching and dialogue and communication to have the most extraordinary kids we can. More information at zeninamoment.com. I have a whole bunch of podcasts there. If you like this one, please forward along. And there's more at my website, zeninamoment.com, as well as courses, ways for you to relate with me and for me to support you in building this extraordinary relationship with your IGS. In the meantime, until we get to be together again, I am sending you love and blessings.